have here 40 people registered. There's not enough space people in the back. You know that there's like two more chair, uh, chairs here. You can take a seat or a chair there. Um, yes, so uh, today we are going to have, um, I would say that it's a group, some kind of session, but it's mostly going to be a lecture with that amount of people. Uh, where we're going to talk about templates. So how many people we here we have from short, uh, from junior, uh, junior and seniors? One, two, three, four. Okay, okay junior and seniors, seniors who are not taking classes in here. Uh, okay, so Ahmad and Valentina, I see. So, so all of you are my students, great. Or uh, over the students. So, and we haven't talked much about templates in any of the classes. So, one of the challenges that I will have to face today is that half of the people here are like juniors and sophomores, and half of the people here are freshmen. So, you have a different backgrounds, and I will try to address that. So, but in a nice class, we talked about templates. And uh, the idea is that that's actually, many people think that the only reason to program in C++ it's because C++ has templates. Uh, so people are saying, like, uh, you know, if I, uh, if not for templates, I would switch to different language 25 billion times already. But the templates actually make uh, the, a lot of language to do something that uh, neither of uh, any popular uh, other programming languages do. Uh, the thing is that. Um, Today we will not go deep into this. I mean, we'll go a little bit into details, but uh, I will not teach you how to be template metaprogrammers. That's not the point of the class. The point of the class is to introduce you to the, to the idea of templates. Well, um, first, the question to you, what's a template in C++? Opinions? Sure, Jamar. Uh, okay, sure. Maybe someone else wants to try? I think. Uh, what's happening? It's a word that we use in templates, great, but, but, but it doesn't define templates. What template? Uh, sure, yeah. Is this like class or function that can accept different types? Great. Yeah, okay. So the idea is that uh, in C, the, uh, the language is typed. And it means that all variables at all times should have a defined type. Type, right? So, for instance, um, uh, so for instance, no, no, yes. Uh, if I do, I promise that we use black marker. Right? If I do in a, what's the type of a variable? Integer. If I try string s, what type of string s, uh, s variable? If I do vector, uh, vector map uh, in string m, what's the type of m variable? No. I mean, it's vector of vectors, of maps, of integers, of strings. So that's a very, very complex type, but it's still a type, and it's well defined. And uh, the idea is that it means that uh, variables can only interact with the uh, other variables that they know what to do with. So for instance, integer no, or integers know that if I interact with other integers, I can add them, I can subtract them, I can multiply them, whatever. Uh, also, for instance, strings know that uh, if I add an integer, I actually need to do what? What, what happens if I uh, do something like s plus equal a in this context? Concatenation, right? So a will be added to the end of string. Uh, what will happen if I try to do this? Will compile? No, because then you will say, I don't know what this thing is, right? And so in C, the big problem was that like there was um, really hard to define all those um, uh, all those manipulations between types. It was really hard to define all of those things for that many types. 
So let's see an example, maybe. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, example zero. I prepared examples. Can you imagine? For once, Professor Pyle prepared for the class. So, as you can see, we have a main function. And we have some integers, some doubles, and some rationals. Uh, hello from your OP class. And what do we want to print? Minimal of, two. Minimal of the two numbers. Great. So let's maybe write those functions. So for instance, for this minimal, um, what should be the signature of the function? What should be the name of the function? So it should return an int, and it should uh, take two integers, right? So, so, that, uh, uh, so because a, b are integers, that means that our function should also take integers. So, and uh, we return what? I mean, we can do something fancy, something like this, right? Then I return what? B, and otherwise I return A. Fancy ternary operations. Everyone understands that line of code? Yes. Good. Uh, I, I, I hope no matter what year you are, you, you can understand it. But as you can see, there is a problem. So I have written this minimum. But now this minimum kind of compiles, but it complains. It complains that our doubles will be converted to integers. Because our minimum, it takes integers. And C and D are doubles. So it's like, well, I can convert doubles to integers, but we kind of lose some precision. So what's the solution to it? Right. Of course, to write another minimum. This time it takes double. Right? Yes. Um, actually, if you allow, let me rewrite it like this. Because I like it this way more. So, and what should be ex uh, inside the second minimum? Yeah. Exactly the same code. Because it doesn't change whether it's integer or double. The code is exactly the same. But unfortunately, the function has to be different because there are different data types involved. And now look at rational. With rational, it also doesn't work. So what we should do? Write a third minimum. Rational A, rational B. And then the code again should be exactly the same. Assuming that rational overloaded operator um, uh, operator less, and as you can see, I did overload operator less. And uh, assuming that, the code will combine fine. Let's see. I actually never tested it before the code. So if it doesn't compile, blame it on someone else. No, it does. So it works just fine. But what's the obvious problem that C programmers had to encounter all the time in like 20th, uh, 12th century BCE or wherever they were writing their code? Like dumb kids repeat, repeating the code. Repeating the same code many times. So as you can see, the content of all those three methods are the same. But there has to be three methods, because one method takes integers, another takes doubles, the third one takes rationals. If I will need one with strings, I will need to write a fourth one. If I will need one with, I don't know, vectors, I will write the fifth one, and so on and so on. That was all problematic. And so when Jan Strauss, uh, God bless his name, uh, created C++, uh, he invented the idea. What if you make a compiler to figure out those things for us? So instead of us explicitly, right, so openly saying that this is an int, this is a string, this method takes an integer, uh, this method takes a double, and so on and so on, instead of uh, us making the, uh, that, um, making us do, do that on our own, we'll make a compiler to figure out the type. So. And that's how the idea of templates were overborn. So the idea of what if we can write one function and the compiler will figure out ourselves, uh, itself whether it's an integer function, whether it's a double function, or whether that's a um, rational function. So let's see how it works. So instead of writing all of this, 
we can actually write the following code. So we need to write, say that we are writing a template. A template with type name of T, right? No. Template of T. T is the name of our uh, type name. Um, let me look up for a second. Yeah, with the syntax, because the syntax is something that gets out of my head often. So we say template with the type name of T. Uh, instead of type name, we can actually write word class. So if you ever seen in maybe some internet or somewhere, uh, word type name or word class in, uh, near word template, both of them work. Let's for simplicity use word class because everyone uh, know a word class. So we are saying that we want to create a template that will take some class T. You see this um, angle brackets, by the way. Where have you seen it before? Vectors. In vectors, in stacks, in maps, in all those data structures, right? So when we de de uh, declare a vector, we are saying that a vector of integers and put uh, angle brackets around it. So the same here. We are saying that we want to create a template function that takes some class T. And well, that T can be any class. So, and the idea is that we now say that we have some function called minimum that will take some variable i uh, or some variable a of type t, and it will take some other variable b of type t, and it will also return something of type t, right? And then within the code, we put our line. And now, as you can see, none of the minimums come. Um, complain about anything. And moreover, even if we run this code, it will compile and work great. So how does this work exactly? We say that this our function, it's a template. Who will define template? Give me definition of what template in English language. Hmm? Mm, okay. Another one? Uh, kind of a set of rules by which you can do something. With lots of different inputs. Uh, what, what what we really like, like in computer science? Blueprint. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that we are saying that this method, it's actually a blueprint. And you can use any class instead of a T, and it will work with it. So if you want, you can use an integer. If you want, you can use a double. If you want, you can use a, a string, whatever. And actually, under the hood, the compiler, it creates all those methods. It creates a separate method for integers, separate method for double, separate method for uh, rational, and so on and so on, but it does it automatically. We don't have to write it. And that's the great uh, upside. Actually, if you go to the um, uh, STL, STL implementation of mean, what's STL? How, how is the full name? standard template library. So every time you write something STD, so for instance, you write STD, C out, STD in NDL, STD vector, STD string. Actually, STD is a shorthand, not for st uh, standard library. It's shorthand for standard template library because the standard library of C++, it's full of templates just like this. If you go to STD library and look into uh, minimum function that's written there. It's going to be uh, using some form of templates as well. So that's how you can use templates with functions. Questions about it? Great. Uh, let's look at another example. Okay. So let, let's look at, at code, right? So we have some different things. So we have regular good old array. We have a vector. Uh, and we have a CD array. Do you guys know that a CD array exists? What's a CD array? I mean, fixed size array is this array, right? What's the difference? Uh, hmm? I mean, size is attached here as well. You can get it easily. That, that's a good answer. So basically, again, the idea in C, we were using this arrays. In C++, uh, these arrays were invented. It's basically the same, 
but it has some more safety and you can easily get the size as Luna pinpointed. But then in the end, everyone uses vectors anyway. So for our fellow freshmen who doesn't know what vectors are, um, don't worry about it. The, the main idea, uh, we are going to discuss it, but the main idea is some things that can also store uh, numbers. So, and we want to print all of them. So again, if not for templates, what we will need to do? What we will need to do if not for templates? We will need to create three different functions. Uh, one function will take C array, another function will take a C++ array, the third function will take vector. Instead, we do this. Mm. So what's going on in the code? So again, we create a template, and then we take some object of that template class. Again, that template class can be anything. And then? We pass it as a reference, as a content reference. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's the tail. The main, what, what, what it does? It prints it, right? So the idea is that actually, let me try running this. I actually also never run this. I hope it runs. It does. Oh, OK, mm -hmm. I actually ran it. So, and it works with both arrays and vectors. Why? Sure, but why? Okay. Uh, it's not specific to, uh, so none of the things that I've written in my, uh, in my method print actually references either vector or array or something. I mean, it uses one thing that all those three elements does do, uh, that all those three elements do. And that thing is for each, right? So for each works with both, um, um, with both vectors and regular arrays. But what will happen if I will do something like uh, this? And then I will do this. Will this work? Why? Because it actually C doesn't even allow me to compile it. Yes. Yes, we cannot iterate over integer. We cannot use for each loop with an integer. So the idea is that, uh, and as you can see, I'm not even allowed to compile. Because again, remember, Templates under the hood, all four functions are created. One function for arrays, another for vectors, another for std arrays, and the fourth one for integers. All of those functions are created automatically by the compiler. And when compiler creates a function for integers, it, it cannot compile it because, well, integers cannot be put in for each loop. And because of that, it, uh, it throws a mistake, um, an exception. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so then you may ask a question, how do I prevent this happening, you know, but uh, I'll address it in the end of the class. Any questions about templates for methods? Something like this. Great. So let's quickly breathe through first example. First example is, uh, let's see. So the idea is, we have our vector, right? So people from sophomore and up already seen that code 20 billion times, right? So we create, uh, I've written a very crude vector, I create it, and I fill it up with data. Right, again, if you're not sure what vector is, don't concentrate on the code, concentrate on the idea that uh, vector is basically enhanced, an enhanced beta version of an array, right? So I create an, uh, an, uh, my own vector for integers, and it works fine. Now, what if I want to create my own ver version uh, of vector for doubles? Can you guess what I need to do? I need to copy all of this, put it here, Rename it double, rename it double here, rename it double here, uh, where else? Here. 
rename it double uh, here rename it double here uh, probably that, that's all right yeah, even forget it somewhere. You always forget it somewhere, sure. And double here. So, and then I can create this code. But instead of uh, integers, I will use doubles. You will change it to double here, write it to here. And then let's do 1.1, 1 .1, 2.2. It even doesn't like something. What it doesn't like? The name of the oh yeah, I forgot to change the name of the constructor. Thank you. Okay, and now, it's, uh, and now here it should be V two, right? So now let's see whether it will work. Uh, seems like working. What's the obvious problem? What if I want to do vector with strings? Well, you know what I do. I copy this, I change it, and, 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 and you can fall asleep for the next five minutes. What's the obvious solution? Instead of all of this, I write here template uh, class T, call it just via, uh, a regular vector, and here, yes, I will need to replace all these places, but uh, only once. And so, let me do this real quick. So I, I write it only one uh, one time like this, okay, and here it also should be t. So I, I I rewrite it one time. I think this time I didn't forget anything. And then here, if I want to create a vector of integers, uh, can you recall this syntax? Have you seen it somewhere before? So what does this square or square brackets double actually mean? Now let's see that it compiles. It seems to. So what does square bracket uh, int actually do? Specify what? Uh, right. So uh, when we write in square bracket int, it says, uh, "Hey compiler, when you will be creating object." Please create this object with integers instead of all of those t's. If, if I write double, it says, hey, compiler, when you create an object, please create that object with doubles instead of all of those t's. If I, if I do, I don't know, uh, this and put here string, std string, right? Uh, it will work as well. Because again, compiler will be like, oh, instead of putting, uh, instead of T, I should put string. So now, uh, freshman who are here, I hope you, can, you know how you can finish your lab number four, where you need to do your stack templated. So the only thing you need to do is this, and replace all integers with this. So, so that's, that's basically the, the, the very basic stuff with templates, right? So when you want your classes to, to be used to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, different data types, you make them templated and go on with your life. What questions you may have? What's the downsides of template? Honestly, none. Uh, increase compile time. So why Linux kernel? Okay, Linux kernel is a bad example. It's C. Why uh, some libraries takes five minutes to compile? Because compiler go, goes and generates all those different functions. Uh, the, the main question that you may have is, how do I use it in real life? So like, okay, I'm a freshman, I need to finish my lab number four. I add it to my lab number four and continue and, and uh, submit it. Like, I am uh, a student of very Dushny Professor Pavel, right? Uh, who asked me to write data structures from scratch. Okay, I need it for my data structures course. Uh, where can I use it in real life? Well, the idea is that, first of all, if you develop C++ language, 
like the language itself. If you write standard library, you need this. How many people here want to develop C++ language? Again, not in C++, but develop the language. So much enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so to answer the question where I can use it in real life, I prepared this mock example. This one? Oh, that's actually the one that I just showed you, the one that where I rewritten it with templates. Uh, this example that I prepared. So that's quite a lot of code. I mean, not that much. 90 lines of code. Let's start with main. So what do we do? So we create a student that is of software engineering department. His name is Pavel, he is age 23, uh, he is a sophomore. Then we create another student of software engineering department. His name is Anatoly, he, his age is also 23, he is a junior. And then we create a student of Gryffindor department. Her name is Hermione Granger, she is 24, and she is a junior. And now we create a course. The course is also part of software engineering department. The course name is OP, and the instructor is Dmitry Alexandrovich. And so we want to enroll all of those three students, and then print the information about the course. Pretty uh, simple main class, right? So we create three students, we create a course, we enroll students to the course and print. Let's see whether it compiles. I hope it does. I never tested on this computer whether it all works. It does. Right, so let's see. So we say that our course is uh, OP, instructor is Mitya Alexandrovich. The students from the same department as the course, right? So the course is software engineering and the students are software engineering. It's Pavel and Anatoly. And the, course, uh, and the students from different departments, well, we don't know their names, and we'll talk about that in a second. But that is the test case, right? So we have some course, and we want to know uh, of some, from some department, and we have students of some department, right? So, and again, we can go through the entire code here. Um, so for instance, here is the student. It has a template for department. Uh, then we have a course. That course has also template for department. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And here is all the methods. Like you can scan it really fast if you want. But that's not the main idea. The main idea is why is it better than polymorphism? For those people who know what polymorphism is. So, so first of all, for those people who know what polymorphism is, how can you reduce this with polymorphism? Sure. Egyptian classes of different departments, maybe some of the trying to department and use some pointers to store them. Mm -hmm. the classes of these classes. Right. So, so create some extra class department, create uh, so software engineering department, create uh, um, Gryffindor, inherit them from that upper class department uh, and create uh, your uh, po polymorphic uh, array. Right. So first let's answer the question of people who know what polymorphism is. Why is this better than that? Because polymorphism can create the uh, object slicing, for example. So object slicing, that's the first problem, right? So we, we, um, it's really hard to cast from one project, uh, object to another, but the second problem. When is it determined, determined what class is what object? Uh, what object is what class during the run of the program? So the main idea is that if you use polymorphism or if you don't use templates in general, many many things in C++ as a no programming language are determined at runtime. What's runtime? What is runtime? You know what runtime? Hmm? The moment where the program continues to work. Right. So the process of working, our program actually running, actually working. So and many things are determined at runtime. So that means what? That the program needs to spend time to figure it out when it's already running. So for instance, when your operating system is running, it needs to determine, uh, determine several things. Things like what? Date time. Date time. Good. What else? Uh, what exactly about memory? How much 
applications are running. Okay, what applications are running, where the cursor is, or something like that. And, but some things are, uh, don't change uh, based on uh, when operating system is running. Like what? What things doesn't change? And, uh, independently of whether the operating system is running uh, or not. So what things you can determine, determine once, and then don't update it ever for operating system. Hmm? Sure, so for instance, I don't know, showing you that Windows logo when you run Windows. Great, what else? Version of operating system. It's, it, uh, I hope you don't update your operating system while still running. Uh, if you don't want your uh, hard drive to, to get uh, roasted. What else? Come on, guys. What else? Basic. Mm, sure, so some, some, some work with drivers. Okay, let's talk about this program that most people took it for. Does it, for instance, every time it runs, do people switch between courses? Probably <laughs> not. Uh, every time we run OR outside EG, the, does, I don't know, the year the program was created change? <coughs> right, so if you go to OR outside EG, at the, end, uh, at the bottom there's going to be a like copyright outside and then some years. Does it change every time? No. Uh, does it... Uh, mm, does, for instance, uh, the number of departments change? Well, uh, probably, but again, not very, very often. So the idea is that if some things are not changed between uh, the runs of the program, and moreover, it may be ch uh, things doesn't change ever. So um, um, maybe, maybe you, need, you can determine them once, and they uh, don't change again, like in this case. You determine the... Uh, department of students and they, and they don't change after all. So the idea why to calculate it when the program is running, if you can, can calculate them once at runtime. So uh, the idea is that in other languages like in JavaScript, in Python or whatnot, when you create a vector of something, the, uh, the type of that vector is determined during the time of the, the run, uh, during runtime. So the program needs to go to the, uh, to the memory, ask what type of that vector is, and then allocate it, and so on and so on. Well, in C++, because of templates, that all calculated once at compilation. Remember I was telling all of you the stories about uh, Linux kernel compiling for 12 hours? Well, that, uh, why is it, uh, the operating systems compile so much? It's because they try to uh, do all calculations, as much calculations as possible during compilation. So when the program actually runs, it runs really fast or smoothly, right? So we, we don't recalculate all those things. Um, so the same is here. So yes, we can use polymorphism, right, or whatever. But polymorphism will all be calculated during the runtime. And that means that our program will spend time calculating all of that. While templates will be calculated during um, compilation time. And uh, that means that the program will calculate it once and then it will run really fast. And again, when it will calculate it, when programmer compiles it, when the actual user will use that program, it, uh, um, it will not uh, uh, spend time calculating all those stuff. All right? So, uh, that's exactly what happens here. So we have a vector of students from the same departments, and we have a vector of students from any other departments. By the way, helpful thing, STD any says that this can be of any type. And then here we do check um, if the student is from the same department, we enroll it in one vector. If it was a student from different department, as you can see, right, so we checked that the departments are different. We enroll it in different departments. Questions about this example? Uh, STD any, uh, the, the, um, 
Great question. So uh, template T is one concrete template that we are using here, right? So uh, theoretically, I can probably create, uh, so there will be uh, like um, here course department and other departments. But the problem is that we, if I do, so short answer, template T you need to specify. So here I need to specify that it's software engineering department. Uh, or here I need to specify that this is Gryffindor. But with STD any, it, uh, I don't need to specify, just understand that it's anything you want. So, uh, and it's uh, again, uh, optimizes this uh, really nicely. So let's do the next example. For instance, this. So imagine I want to cook plov. Let's look at the, at the, co at the code how I cook plov. Who uh, approves of the recipe? <laughs> uh, what was better rice? I will change it. <laughs> okay, let, let's leave it like this. So I have, uh, I have a code. So I have some piece of mutton, right, baranina, some piece of carrot, some type of rice, and I create plov. So plov is actually an object of what class? Okay, it's a class meal. Does do meal always have three ingredients? What if I want to create another? Uh, so let's say I also want to have, I don't know, egg of class egg. Uh, I don't think I have class egg. Let's say that what if I want to um, have two carrots in my plov? Small carrot. Small carrot, yes. What if I want to create two carrots of my plov? So I will do this uh, bigger plov. And so what do you think? It has four ingredients now. So uh, the idea is that I want to be able to say that the amount of arguments my program, uh, my uh, class take is actually variable. As you can see, it will compile actually. Let me compile this. Right, so we we preparing uh, uh, mutton, carrot, and rice, and then our our meal is ready. And the same is the second one. I actually need to write a bigger plot dot prepare meal. So what uh, what I'm showing to you is that the templates are actually, if you use them correctly, are very uh, flexible. Let's see. Here you go. So uh, templates are very flexible, and you can even uh, say that the number of uh, arguments is variable. So if you're interested in syntax, look here. So this is my constructor of class meal, and it says that it, sa uh, that it takes items three dots. What does that three dots mean? Mm-hmm. So I can add as many arguments as I want. Where have you seen functions that take variable number of arguments Java. before? No, no, JavaScript doesn't exist. It's a, a, a devil spawn uh, in, in, in C, maybe. Even so, uh, I asked Professor Taxator, by the way, whether he taught you that in structure programming. I'm talking to freshman right now. He said he did. What? What? What's the question? Uh, where have you seen functions that take a variable number of uh, elements? Hmm? Cement. Cement is not a function. Well, there's like methods in the computer when you pass the... Each method. Given a... Add execution. Oh, where did I add execution? Hmm? Add execution. Uh, that's CMake, that's not C. Right, it's not C++. What in C and C++? But that's actually a good example. What's your name? Kumar, right? Yeah, it's a good example, but what was in C? Have you heard of such function printf? Hmm? Printf, yes, thank you, Ting. So, how do, uh, printf works, Ting? So, we have 
the variable of the variable parameters to print. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you probably have seen, let me quickly write it, right? So we say in A equals 5, in B equals 6, and then I can do print F, and then here I write the format, right? Have you seen something like this before? And then I say A and B. So the idea, how many arguments I can have here? As many as I want. So I can do like this, and then I will have one, two, three, uh, uh, five arguments. Actually, yeah, whatever. So the number of arguments can vary. So for, uh, for that, in C++, we use this idea with three dots. And the same we can use with templates. When we define a template, again, we can replace type name with class. When we define a template, we can say, well, uh, if we put three dots after the word class, it means that we can have as many classes as we want here. So like in this case, I have um, flow consisting only of three ingredients, and here I have flow consisting of, in, of four ingredients. I have only one question to you. If I remove carrot from plof, is it gonna be, uh, is it still plof or not? Is there a not uh, plof, uh, plof purists? who are saying that not. So as you can see, it will compile even with uh, two arguments as well. Um, like this. Okay. So um, let's look at example number, oh, okay, yeah. So before we go to the last example, we need to talk about this. Questions about this. How is it called, by the way? Functions that have uh, variable number of parameters. How is it called in a fancy language? And you all were taking YPCS class. I'm talking to sophomores right now. Hmm? Hmm? How, how are the functions with variable number of parameters are called? They have fancy name. Variatic functions, you know, not variable, variatic. And actually, if you uh, look it up, it is called that way in all languages. And so now I prepared a test for you. Exam, exam time. It will be graded for all courses. Even if you don't take courses with me, I will give you grade for it. Uh, so, but before that, we'll need to talk quickly about maths. All right, so again, sophomores and up probably heard about maps. But um, for uh, just as a rehearsal, right? So map is actually very simple, um, very simple uh, data structure. It basically has pairs, right? So one el first element of the pair is called key. The second element of the pair is called value. And you can look up value knowing the key. So for instance, here's an example. I create a map that as the key takes a string, and as a, um, as a uh, value takes a double. As you can see again, square brackets, because it can be mapping anything to have anything. It can map string to double, it can ma map int to uh, boolean, anything, right? And so we say that, and the map's name is G a student GPA. And we say that uh, GPA of Harmony is 4.0, GPA of Harry is 2.8, GPA of Ron is 1.2. As you can see, I am not a big fan of Ron Weasley. Anyway, and then we print it. So we print it using for each, the same way we print vectors. And then, for instance, here we create a map that maps string to some object of class book. Here is that class book, very simple. Uh, I overloaded operator less. Why? So one thing is that regular maps, STD maps, they are sorting their elements by default, right? So in this case, this uh, STD string is going to be sorted. This uh, so so it's going to be sorted by this string. Here is going to be sorted by this string, right? So and let's see. So I, take, I, I create an uh, entry. I said that there is this book called Hobbit, and uh, the object of class book that corresponds to that name is this one. 
the name is Hobbit, author is Tolkien, it was written in that uh, year. Then To Kill a Mockingbird, again, author, uh, author is Harper Lee, written in that year, and so on. And again, I print it. And then here I have an ordered map. Question only to freshmen. Who can guess what's the difference between map and an ordered map? And map is ordered. So, order, uh, so regular map is sorted, an ordered map is not sorted. Right, and so here we have what? Attendance list, right? So, um, but let's see who we have here. Um, who wants to volunteer with their name? Azirid. Azirid, great. How, uh, what year of, uh, of study you are, you are a sophomore? Then, who else do we have? Oh. Sure, Farzan. What year of study you are? Great. Who else do we have? Uh, me? Okay, sure. Uh, we have me. My year of study, six, I believe. Yes, I'm that old. No, six, I believe. Yes, it's six year. I'm here. And it will work that. And let's look at the last book, at the last map. So it takes book as a key. Uh, it uh, says, so it's reading list. So let's say it's the map that says who we borrowed the book from, who we took the book from. So we say that we took Hobbit from Hermione, we took To Kill a Mockingbird from Harry, and we took 1984 from Ron. What's this? So that basically means that instead of sorting, book, uh, sorting the map in increasing order, we are going to sort it in decreasing order. And we're going to sort it based on what? Based on book. And we're going to sort books based on what? On the year they're being published. So that means that uh, it's going to be printed in what order? First the books that are printed early, then the books that are printed later. I really hope that my laptop will not die in three seconds. Okay, it says seven minutes remaining. We should persevere through that. Uh, so let's run this example to just see that it works. Mm. Yeah, see, it, it's really bad. So we hope it works. So as you can see, it's printed everything, right? So this book are going to be written in following order. So first book written in 1937, this book in, 14, uh, in 1949, then books in 1960. So it's sorted in that order because I specifically sort to, uh, told to put the books that are earlier first. By the way, look at the template arguments. So first is the type of first element of the pair, second is the type of the second element of the pair, and the third is optional. That says how exactly we want to sort our numbers. Well, now you have everything to solve this. Good luck. I'm going to go uh, get my charger, explain me how this works in uh, five minutes. I'm not joking right now. I'm gonna uh, come back to five minutes. Thank you. 
Yeah. Yes, but why so weird? I mean, obviously we want to print map. The method says it's going to print map. The question is why this works. No, 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 wait. You think, you think. You can work in pairs, by the way. I even encourage you to work in pairs or in groups. It works because of template. It's great. Uh, that, that, that's a, a good insight, Luna. Who could have guessed that it works because of templates? Why is this line the way it is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let's see, one by one. So, uh, no wait, aside from Luna, ideas, people. We have, we have 40 people here, we came here to eat food, you need to work together. You didn't even leave food for me, right? So you need to work really hard to, to make me not angry with you next time I teach you class. So, what's going on in here? Okay. And this finds the model in the and the bug prints. So we get. I think we all know what happens in the bug print. It takes every element from the map and prints it. That's not the problem. The problem is why we have this awful template line on top. Yes. Okay, so you play four different classes now, don't Yeah. What's our name? A, A is the key, B is the value, M is the map. Itself? Itself. And it has three uh, <laughs> parameters because it has key and value and also X, which is a variable. Right. right. Uh, so let's see. M is the key of the map. So we say that we don't get a map, and then we're going to have a key. Right? And we have. B. B is the value of the map, so the second element of the pair in the map. Then what's arcs? Arcs is all those additional things. Remember less from just now? So we are saying that if our map has those additional things, uh, we are welcome them. If they don't, uh, it's okay. So one of the things with variated functions and variated templates is that they, uh, if there is no additional elements, it's also fine. It also will come back. So what we are saying, we actually need to read this not from left to right, we need to read it from the middle. So we are saying that we have some class M that is going to have three other classes, classes as uh, templates. One of them is going to be a, uh, called A, another one of them is going to be called B, and the last one is going to be very A, and it's going to be called arcs. So that, name, that means that we can take any class that follows this pattern, that takes one class, second class, and then variated numbers of parameters. Does the order things matter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. So actually, I have a C, very hidden solution that you can see from the beginning. Did anyone offer to come here and click on it? You guys are not inventive enough. Look, so this is the same method. I only added this to differentiate. And now look, we create a regular map that takes string and double. So for in case of this map, so it's the same map from before for GPA. What's going to be A, what's going to be B, and what's going to be M and arcs? So A is... A is... String B is and arcs is nothing, we don't have it. And M is gonna be 
SCD map that takes string and double. Great. Then uh, this one. What's going to be A? String. What's going to be B? Book. What's going to be arcs? Non existent. What about this? A is going to be book. B is going to be string. Arcs is going to be less. And I forgot the last map. What's the last map that we had? Mm, it was here. I completely forgot to copy it. Ah, because, um, where is it? This one. Right? So what's the difference with this map from all other maps? It's an ordered map. It's a different class. It's not even a map. So look. Mm. This is all of class map. This is of class an ordered map. So if you are creating different regular methods without templates, you will need to um, you will need to create different methods for printing maps and different methods for printing an ordered maps. But we we just talked. That the, what's the only difference between an ordered and an ordered map? Where's my algorithm students? What's the difference between ordered map and an ordered map? Time complexity, thank you. Oh my god. Should I fail all my algorithm students? Anyway. So, but even though there is also time complexity issue, from the point of view of how we interact with the classes, they are the same. So that's why this one uh, awful uh, final boss of templates, as I called it, it can print any kind of map. Um, moreover, it, it's not necessarily a map. So, for instance, it can even print this. Mm. I actually never tested it, but I assume it can. Was it STG array, right? Okay. Uh, let, let's fill it up with numbers. Debug print map. Ah. Hmm, it actually doesn't like them. I wonder why. So, so the idea is that, okay, the, 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 then, then it's uh, irrelevant. I don't want to get into this. But the idea is that this class then, it can take any map and print it. So instead of having 25 different classes, that one uh, uh, method, sorry, that one prints map that maps strings to integers, another prints uh, print, uh, map that uh, uh, maps integers to doubles. The third one prints an ordered map. The fifth one prints like my own map that I created because I hate STL. You know, we had a professor at Alza who was uh, like, STL is the worst thing ever invented. And every time I, I, I code in C++, uh, I hate it with all my heart. Uh, so uh, the idea is that even if you read in your own map, it will work with that. And that's how the entirety of uh, standard library is written. So that's more or less your deep, uh, not very deep dive into templates. One of the things that you need to know is that templates is actually Turing complete. So you can write programs just in templates. And another thing that you can know is that that's for something what people do. That's called template metaprogramming. Uh, so, but that's a story for another day. So for my freshman students, I hope you now can make your stack takes not only integers but any type. For all everyone else. I hope that you now understand why maps say this and why we say less. Remember that priority queue thing from yeah, yeah. Extra, right? It also takes three different arguments. It also is written via templates. One of the things that you may say though, um, coming back to example one, or to example 0 0.5, uh, to example zero actually either. Uh, what if, T doesn't support operator less than. So what, what will happen if I do, for instance, uh, this but with vectors? Vectors do not support operator less than. What will happen if I call min with two vectors? 
uh, it will not compile, but it will not say what exactly makes it not compile. And that was a big problem until C++20, where they built another big structure over templates, called it Concepts, uh, and uh, wrote a 700 pages book about how to use it. Uh, so maybe the next group session from me is going to be about that. In any case, thank you all for coming. I'm going to stop the recording, but don't go yet. Uh, let me stop the recording.